Multi-Area OSPF is now included in the Cisco CCNA certification exam. I'm using Packet Tracer 6.2 and I'm going to walk through a demonstration of Multi-Area OSPF. If you would like to follow along, you will find a link in the description below the video to my website where you can download this starter file. You will need to have Packet Tracer 6.2 installed on your computer. Multi-Area OSPF was designed for situations in which you have a really large network with many routers. An enterprise size network where there's 30 to 200 routers, let's say. And in a situation like that, if all of those routers have to communicate with one another using OSPF, think of the number of link state advertisements and the number of neighbor relationships and the size of their link state databases. Since it's a link state routing protocol, OSPF routers need to have the entire picture of the network in their link state databases. They need to know of all routes on the network. So this type of situation becomes a huge burden and would really consume a lot of resources and overhead on the routers. And so for a situation like that, multi-area OSPF was designed. It's a hierarchical solution in which the network is broken up into different OSPF areas and the routers in their separate areas exchange and establish adjacencies and exchange link state advertisements and have all of the routes for those networks in that area but the communication between areas is then summarized or a summary type of communication so that routers in one area don't need to execute shortest path first recalculations every time routers in um, a completely separate area have a change in the network. It seems to me that the real trick with multi-area OSPF is in the network design. You need to have a thorough network design in which a lot of planning would take place. So let's take a look at how I've laid this out in Packet Tracer to try to simulate what it would be like in a multi-area OSPF, in a large multi-area OSPF network. There are a couple of rules that you have to follow. For one, multi-area OSPF networks essentially have a two-layer hierarchy. You have the backbone area, area zero, and you have the non-backbone areas. In this case, I've got area zero here in the green, area one is the yellow, and area two is the blue. Now in this two-layer hierarchy, all non-backbone areas need to connect to the backbone area. So if you're going to have, let's say, five areas in your multi-area OSPF implementation, all of those non-backbone areas need to connect directly at some point to area zero. Also, the point in having multiple areas is to try to reduce the size of your routing tables. So you want to design your IP addressing scheme or your addressing scheme on your network so that you have contiguous subnets within areas. So in this situation, in area one, I have the 192.168.1 network, a 192.168.2 network, a three network, and a four network. So all of these subnets or networks are contiguous. This will make this area easily summarized. Area zero, I have a 10.1 network and a 10.2.2 network. And in area two, I have 172.16.1 networks that have been subnetted to a 32 network, a 64 network, and a 96 network. So once again, planning your network addressing out into contiguous subnets will help reduce the size of the routing tables because summary routes will be able to be advertised between areas. I should point out that this network design and layout is just for example purposes only. If this were a real multi-area OSPF network, there would be many more routers in the individual areas. We would have more routers in area two than just three routers. It's recommended to have no more than 50 routers in an area. Also, area border routers like ABR1 and ABR2 are in two areas each. It's recommended to have a border router 
in no more than three areas. Notice that in area zero, the backbone area, we have router ASBR. This is the Autonomous System Boundary Router. This router is the Autonomous System Boundary Router because it connects out to the ISP. So this is the boundary or the edge of this organization or autonomous system. So there is an Autonomous System Boundary Router, there's Area Border Routers, and there's Internal Routers. We have Backbone Area Routers and Non-Backbone Area Routers. In the next video, I'll begin to configure multi-area OSPF.